Frag plugs, super glue, and a basic ZOA fragging session on this week's 5 Minute Friday. Let's go. What's up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. Welcome to 5 Minute Friday, where I will lead you into the weekend with a cool tip trick or gadget that will help you along in your reefing journey. Today we're going to talk about frag plugs, glue, and then we're going to put it all together and frag up a Zoa. My advice to you is to always have some sort of frag plug on hand. They come in many different shapes and sizes. My favorite is the ceramic style frag plugs. Uh, they look like this. They're easier to clean in my opinion, so that's why I like them so much because it's easier to get a toothbrush around them. They clean up real nice. That's one style of frag plug. Of course, you've got the discs. These are great for like Cyphastria or any kind of encrusting coral, like maybe an encrusting Monty. You can even get them bigger than this, three, four inches. You can get tiles as well. They're easier to frag when you're ready to do that. You can just snap off a piece and you're good to go. This is also a cool frag plug and it just sits right on top of the egg crate. Kind of cool because it's a hexagon shape. You can pretty much lay these all across the top and they're gonna form one flat layer of frag plugs if you have a bunch of these. So that's an option as well. You can also just do rubble rock. So I've got a bunch of this just like hanging out. Now the only issue with this is it's not cured. So it might be good to throw this in a refugium if you've got an option to do that so you can cure it up before because otherwise it's possible that you would get some nuisance algae on a brand new piece of rock if you were to put this in your tank. Frag plugs make it easy to store corals and frag corals because they're easy to cut with bone cutters as well. So overall, they're just a universally accepted way to house corals, whether that be in the aquascape or just in your frag tank as well. I use super glue gel for all of my gluing. Now I have used Polyp Labs reef glue and I have used BRS's reef glue in the past, but this is just super convenient to like, it's right next to our grocery store. So I'll just run in a Dollar Tree every once in a while and just pick up like three or four of these. So I've got like a pile of them in a drawer back there. So it's just convenient. When you get it, make sure it's cyanoacrylate and make sure it's the gel. That is the reef safe version of this. The difference between the Polyp Lab stuff and the BRS stuff and the stuff that's meant for reefing is that it cures a little bit quicker. So if you're gluing sticks or any kind of SPS that you need to stand upright, it will glue and harden a lot faster, which is a good thing when you're trying to balance all those things on a frag rack. So let's put everything together and go ahead and frag up a zoanthid. So of course he's upset because I moved him. And so the polyps are a little closed right now, but here's a picture of it from Instagram that I took when I first got it. But this is a showstopper. Really, really love this zoanthid. So let's go take this over to the table and slice it up. All right, so first things first, we need safety gear. So in my case, I wear gloves and I also wear eye protection whenever I'm fragging zoanthids. I wanna be able to, I wanna empower you to feel comfortable in fragging zoanthids. If you're not an experienced reefer, maybe you're new at this, zoanthids is usually one of those beginner corals that we all try to start because they're colorful, they're not too difficult to keep. And so I wanna empower you to be able to frag them on your own. As long as you're protected, you should be good. You'll need bone cutters, uh, toothbrush if you want it, if you need to clean up the frag plug at all. I usually have this hanging out, this extra frag rack. I soak my plugs before I go because I don't want air bubbles to come up through the glue. Uh, so we've got that. We've got a couple extra frag plugs just in case. And a clean razor blade is another thing that we're gonna need. No oil. So a lot of times these come with some sort of lubricant in between so they don't stick to each other in the package. Make sure you get non-oiled razor blades whenever you're doing this. First things first, we wanna examine the plug and try and determine the line we want to take. Now this is a pretty interesting zoanthid because these are all clustered together. So right here, this polyp, we're going to try and sever the skin in between and then go in with the bone cutters and, and chop it. And hopefully we got a clean cut and it flies right off. So let's cut it. You can see our 
polyp just a little bit better. Got them separated now, there he is. It's a lot harder with the tightly packed zoas. When the polyps grow so close together, sometimes it's hard to separate them. I always like to dry both surfaces real quick. And it looks like we've got one polyp and a baby here. Just a little dab right in the middle. And there you go. Go ahead and dip that in the water really quick. Cures up that glue a little faster. Easy frag session. Once you've successfully done this a couple times, you'll see how uh, fun it can be to watch your collection grow and multiply. Maybe you've got a larger colony of zoanthids that you can split up into 10, 20, maybe even 30 different frags. So there you go, just a simple way to frag zoanthids. Don't overthink it, just don't you know, do one of your expensive zoas right off the bat. Maybe try with some Nirvanas or Pandoras or Mohawks, something along those lines. Try it this weekend and find me on Instagram and show me your results. I'd really like to see that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. As always, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. If you've got any suggestions or a tip of the week, something you'd like me to cover in 5 Minute Friday, please leave a comment down below. We'll see you next week for another 5 Minute Friday powered by the Reef News Network. There's no like cool way of putting on gloves. It just doesn't, it always makes that like latexy sound. I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll go put these back in the tank. Uh, stay safe and we'll see you next week.